Hi, I'm Jessica Grace and welcome to Pulse Television. Each week we'll be sharing the people, places and culture of the Geelong region. Join us as we uncover the hidden gems in your backyard. Tonight we go along to a charity event to promote Feed Geelong. Bethany takes in a puppet show put on by refugees, one of our students checks out Flamefest and the boys from Ordemia perform. First up, Lisa takes a stroll through the Geelong Botanic Gardens. Hi, I'm Lisa from Pulse Television. Today we're at the Geelong Botanical Gardens and we're going to get a little bit of a behind the scenes look at all the new developments here at the gardens. Let's go and take a look. Here at the Botanical Gardens in Geelong, I met with Annette Zealy, the Director of the Botanical Gardens. Welcome to Pulse Television. Thank you. Can you give us a little history of the Botanical Gardens? Like when did it first get established? Um, gardens were first established in 1851, so we're quite old. Um, so the original site, which most people know now as Eastern Park, um, was the Botanic Gardens and what we see here today is the core of that garden, the Establishment Nursery. And then there have been a couple of extensions of the gardens in the, the last few decades? Yes, indeed. So we say three centuries for the gardens. So the original 1800s, 1960s and then the 21st century garden right at the front. Yeah. Now you've got some exciting projects still going on here now. We've got a few to show you. Which one would you like to show us first? Well, I think we should go and have a look at the Curiosity Cabinet. So it's a well-kept secret and people need to know about it. Let's go and have a look. So now in the 1860s the sunken glass house was formed and in 2002 it became the curiosity cabinet. Can you tell us a bit about the displays that you have here? Yeah we're basically talking about plants because we're extremely passionate about plants so we want to share that with people. So we've done a number of displays from living fossils so plants that come from the do dinosaur era but are still growing today. And then we did plants and alcohol and it's a real shame that you missed that because mm. that was fantastic. We had a bar in here. Oh, that would have been fantastic. But you have orchids now. Tell us more about the orchid display. Yeah, the orchid display. This is a great partnership with the Geelong Orchid Indoor Plant Club and some wonderful orchids from the first Cymbidium when people started breeding from them, the first species, and then um, right through to plants that come from um, the Andes, which is amazing. So beautiful, beautiful orchids. Any particular displays you're coming up or how long will this display will be here that people can take advantage and come and look? Yep. This display will be here for a couple of months. We add to it and we change it as things come into flower and we're also adding in carnivorous plants. So that's a great one for kids. Everybody loves a plant that eats insects. Those Venus flytraps. Absolutely. We love those. <laughs> so Annette, the gardens aren't just a great place to hang out on the weekdays or weekends. It's a good educational tool as well. Can you tell us a little bit about the display that we have here? Yeah, the display here is green mulch. So we have a changing display. So this is all about sharing what we know with the with the public and keen gardeners and we're encouraging people to grow plants instead of using an organic mul mulches like stones and, and tan bark so get back to plants. And you can also then buy the plants that you um, display here as well? Yeah we've been testing these plants so they're from our collection so fairly un unusual some of them and some are native some are exotic and our friends group have been growing them on so they'll be available at their plant sales. The Geelong Botanical Gardens not only survives and thrives on the staff members, but they have a lovely friends group. We have fr the friends of the Geelong Botanic Gardens and a representative, Jenny, welcome to Pulse Television. Good, welcome and, and welcome to our gardens because the friends actually think these are their gardens. How many people are involved with the friends of the Geelong Botanic Gardens? We have a membership of around 350 people and of those, about 80 to 100 um, are active volunteers. Do you need to be a good gardener to be a friend of the Botanic Gardens or is that something you can help and share and teach? Anybody can be a friend of the gardens. Uh, some of our volunteers are in fact really good gardeners um, and we have a group called the Growing Friends who propagate material largely from the gardens and they sell that to the general public to raise money for the friends and for the Botanic Gardens. And you can be anybody, those, those ladies and gentlemen too, are absolutely fantastic gardeners and if you don't know what you're doing they will teach you. We've just been looking at the green mulch project so you've got those plants in your own sales? That's right the um, the growing friends are trying to propagate things that are promoted throughout the garden so all those green mulch plants are available from the growing friends nursery. The, the tree behind us too which is a ginkgo which is one of our wonderful special trees in our garden um, we think it was planted around 1860 although we're not entirely sure but you know, 
people like to take things home and you can't take home this tree, but you can go to the nursery and pick up your very own miniature ginkgo and um, grow it for your great grandchildren. So when, are the, when can we come and buy the plants from you guys? Well, the Growing Friends Nursery is open every Wednesday morning between 10 and 12. And three times a year we have a weekend plant sale because not everybody can get here on a weekday. So we have plant sales in spring, autumn and winter. So now when you visit the Geelong Botanic Gardens, you may not be able to take the tree home, but you can take home the little seedling as well and support the Geelong Botanic Gardens as well. Now, Australia being predominantly a drought and desert area, we like to manage our water and they do so at the Botanical Gardens here as well. Can you tell us about the project we're standing up from here? Yep, I certainly can. This is the Eastern Park Stormwater Harvest Dam. We are harvesting stormwater from um, housing in East Geelong that normally goes out into the bay. So all this beautiful water here has rained down on us and basically we're holding here. So this then goes and irrigates the entire gardens as well? Yes, we're using this, this water, we treat it, so we UV filter it, take out all the germs and we um, sand filter it, so we take out all the small particles and then we pump it up to the botanic gardens and we're watering that beautiful garden with, with all of this. So it's not just a water endeavour, it's a fantastic place to come and hang out as well. Yeah, it's beautiful. You see people here, particularly at the end of the day, walking, running, walking the dog, kids in prams, it's fantastic. So whether you're a botanist, a plant enthusiast, family or friends just want to go to a lovely place to hang out on the weekends, come to the Geelong Botanical Gardens. There's something for everybody here. I'm Lisa from Pulse Television. <laughs> And now Pulse volunteer Bethany is joined by a group of young refugee puppeteers. I'm here at the Diversitat Northern Community Hub to find out about a great project that's been going on. Joining me is Robin Martinez. Robin, you're the facilitator of this puppet workshop. What's going on? Well, we've got quite a few um, kids here from the Karen and Kareni communities and they're making um, puppets and they're telling their traditional stories through the puppets. Why puppets? Well, um, in the Karen and Karen are traditionally from Burma and the Burmese have a strong history of puppetry. Not so, not so much the Karen and Karen we have found out, but it's been an interesting way of finding stories because a lot of refugees um, lose their traditional stories and need to reconnect or want to reconnect with those things. We have never done a puppet show before and I understand that they are a beautiful vehicle. If people are vulnerable, they can use the puppet and the puppet can talk. Instead of me talking, it's the puppet. So it can be a nice way of um, getting out there but not getting out there too far. So the puppets are being made here by the, by the young children. What will happen once the puppets are made? What will go on? Well, the children have helped make the puppets but we've got a fabulous man called Ken Evans. He's been helping us make the puppets and he's been getting a lot of artistic input from the children. The puppeteer who has been working with these children trying to help them with their project is Ken Evans. Ken, tell me, what is it about puppets that really captures us? Well, we like to invest in inanimate objects, I think. If we can believe in these little things that um, seem to be alive, it sort of you know, sparks a whole lot of things inside us, emotionally, spiritually. Would you say that puppets aren't just for kids, they're for adults no. as well? Well, puppetry is traditionally by adults for adults. Puppetry has only been in the hands of children for about 100 years, so it's still very much an adult medium. But it, as Robin was saying, it, um, you can tell any sort of story. You can endear an audience and um, capture them with puppetry. One of the participants in this workshop is Lassipo. Lassipo, your puppet is the old woman old woman tell me a bit about yourself uh, my old woman wear Karenni traditional clothes and we were making the puppets what have you liked about making the old lady um, the clothes and what do you want to do after this project is finished will you be use the puppets again yes yeah. What will you do? To show my family. Well, I think the, the old lady, she is very well done and I do love her dress. Thanks for talking to me. Thank you. Hey, Mr Crocodile. Why the long face? This has been Bethany Keats for Pulse Television at the Diversitat Northern Community Hub.